Previously, we gave some meaning to residues with Cauchy's residue theorem, which showed us that we could use residues, which are quantities associated with isolated singularities, to evaluate complex integrals. And if you weren't sold on the importance of Cauchy's residue theorem before, by the end of this video, you will definitely be sold on Cauchy's residue theorem. This is Complex Analysis by a Physicist, and today I'm going to show you how to evaluate real integrals with Cauchy's Residue Theorem. So here are three integrals on the screen, and if you see the integral in the upper left-hand corner, you'll probably look at that and say, well, I can evaluate that integral, but look at these other two integrals right here. These are very nasty looking integrals, okay? Now, we could probably evaluate this bottom one here uh, with some sort of partial fraction decomposition, but it's going to be a mess, and I don't even know where to begin evaluating this one. But each one of these integrals here, and many like it, are going to be able to be evaluated with Cauchy's Residue Theorem. And you might ask the question, how on earth can we evaluate a real integral with a theorem that only works for complex integrals? Well, we'll do it with these few steps. First, we'll define the region partial dr, which is going to be a half circle in the upper half of our complex plane. It's going to be positively oriented and it's going to be of arbitrary radius r. It's going to remain that arbitrary radius r. We're then going to convert all of our real variables to complex ones. In this one we're only going to be working with a single variable x and so we're going to convert all of those to z so that they're allowed to be complex. Then we're going to integrate over the bounds of our, our region, partial dr, and we'll be able to integrate it with Cauchy's Residue Theorem. Then we'll take our result and we'll take our radius out to infinity, which is going to encompass the entire real axis, and therefore we can conclude that the solution to our complex integral is going to be the solution to our real integral, since we'll have all, every quantity covered on the real axis. And, and this is specifically in this video for uh, real integrals on bounds negative infinity to infinity or all space in physics. You see integrals on bounds negative infinity to infinity or zero to infinity quite frequently in physics. And you will see just how useful this is when we go and actually evaluate some of the integrals in a moment. I do want to make one quick note, though, that this is a very simplified uh, sort of version of what we're actually doing here. If you're a pure mathematician or an applied mathematician or even a physicist that in, that is interested in more of the mathematics behind what's going on here, I strongly uh, suggest that you go through and, and find other sources to look at the actual mathematics of what's being done here. This is really just a summary of what's going on and it's really just the steps that we're going to follow to be able to evaluate these integrals. So here we have the first integral, and as I mentioned, we can evaluate this one with a trig substitution. But I'm a physicist, and I'm lazy, and I don't want to have to mess with bounds, I don't want to have to remember my trig identities, I don't want to have to take derivatives, I don't want to have to do any weird substitutions. So we're going to do this with Cauchy's Residue Theorem. So first, let's convert this to a complex integral over partial dr. And now this is something that we can evaluate with Cauchy's Residue Theorem. We have singularities here at plus or minus i, but negative i is not in the upper half of our complex plane, so we only need the positive i. So with Cauchy's Residue Theorem, this is going to equal 2 pi i times the residue of our function z equals i, and this is a pole, so we can go ahead and we can use the limit method of finding our residue. So let's do that. This is going to be 2 pi i times the limit as z goes to i of z minus i divided by, and now we can factor this denominator here, so let's do that. 
and we're going to get a z minus i times z plus i. Our z minus i terms cancel out here, so we're just left with uh, 2 pi i times the limit as z goes to i of 1 on z plus i. And so this is really just going to give us 2 pi i divided by 2 i, which is just pi. And if you evaluate this with your favorite integral calculator or even via a trig substitution, you will get the same result. But this is a straightforward integral, and it's something that we already had a tool to evaluate, but I think we could make the argument that this integral, or, or evaluating the integral in this way, was actually a lot simpler than uh, before. But here I forgot one crucial step. We just need to add in the last little piece that we need to take r to infinity. And now this solution we can conclude as a solution to this real integral right up here. So here we have a very similar looking integral to the one we did before, but now we have this x squared plus 4 term here. So we're going to have some extra singularities introduced here. So let's convert it to a complex integral. Okay, and we can see here we have our singularities at plus or minus i and plus or minus 2i for this term right here. But again, we only need the upper half plane, so we're just going to need a positive i and positive 2i. So this integral here, we can evaluate with Cauchy's residue theorem, so we'll have a 2 pi i times the sum of our residues, so re residue of our function at z equals i, and just for space, I'm just going to write it as f of z, which is just going to be our integrand, so uh, don't freak out about that, and I added an extra parenthesis, uh, plus the residue uh, at z equals 2i of our function. Okay, so let's evaluate this first residue here. And again, these are just going to be your standard poles. So we're going to be able to, to have a little fun with this. So let's write this out here. Um, and so we're going to get uh, 2 pi i all right, times the limit as z goes to i of z minus i divided by z minus i, z plus i, z squared plus 4. Okay, and then we're going to add that to uh, the limit as z goes to 2i of z minus 2i divided by z minus uh, z squared uh, plus 1 times z minus 2i times z plus 2i. Okay, we can see pretty clearly that we have some terms that cancel out right here and right here. And we can really simply evaluate those limits now. So when we evaluate those limits, we'll get 2 pi i times uh, times 1 per 6i minus 1 per 12i, which is just going to give us a 2 pi i divided by 12i, which is just equal to pi sixths. Then we're just going to take r out to infinity, and we can conclude that this is the solution to this integral, having gone through all that. And again, look at how simple of a method this is. We could do some partial fraction decomposition if we really wanted to, but this is very simple. Look at we did it. You know, admittedly, uh, I sort of did the arithmetic here when with these limits in my head. We could have written that out in another line, but even if we do that, that's one, two, three, add the other invisible line here, four, five lines of math, whereas partial fraction decomposition would have been a hell of a lot more work. And we actually got a pretty simple and straightforward solution to this integral. 
Now let's dive into that last really nasty looking integral. So here we have the integral cosine of x divided by x squared plus 1. Okay, and I would not even know where to begin evaluating this integral via a you know, a real method. This is a nasty one. And for those of you uh, physicists that are watching this or, you know, soon to be physicists um, or even applied mathematicians for that matter, you may look at this and say, well, this is something that I would get on an integral table. So why do I need to know to evaluate this? Well, oftentimes with the integral tables you might get, you'll do some algebraic tricks or whatever to then be able to get an integral out where you can just write down the answer based off of the table. But as you'll see by doing this integral, you could probably evaluate it pretty quickly and pretty easily with Cauchy's Residue Theorem. And actually, a lot of the integrals that are given to you on those integral tables are ones that are, uh, you know, uh, done with Cauchy's Residue Theorem. Okay, so let's convert this to a complex integral over our region. So we're going to get integral... Of our, over our region of cosine z divided by z squared plus 1 dz. Now here's the thing. I don't know about you, but we have the same singularity as before from the first problem we did at z equals i. Again, we're not going to use the negative one because it's not part of our region. But this cosine is a little bit tricky. And I want you to recall that uh, e to the i z, or really r e to the i z, is equal to cosine z plus i sine. And if we put an r and a theta here just to, just to change it up, we could. But if we take the real part of this, well, then we can just substitute in i z and that makes things pretty easy so let's do that and further simplify this down because i don't know how i would even go about evaluating a limit as z goes to i for 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 cosine here so let's get rid of this i would just like to take a quick moment here to say that uh in editing this i realized i forgot to add that for each one of these subsequent lines we're just going to be taking the real part uh, of these uh, residues, which in the end, it, you'll see it doesn't really matter, but we are just taking the real part. And let's write it out. And so this is going to equal the inner or the real part of our integral e to the i z divided by z squared plus 1 dz. And now this is a lot easier of a form to do our limit method of finding the residue. So let's do that. And let's go uh, 2 pi i times the residue uh, as z at z equals i of e to the i z divided by z squared plus 1, which is just our function. And we can use the limit method just like before. So this is going to equal 2 pi i. That's a really bad pi. And I do realize all of my pi's are bad. I've just always wrote my pi's as capital pi's. And I don't see any reason why I should change now because I've had years and years of just muscle memory of writing my pi's like that. But anyways, 2 pi i times the limit as z tends to i of z minus i times e to the i z divided by z minus i, which I should write that a little bit better, z minus i times z plus i. And we can cancel these out. And now we just evaluate this limit. So we'll get 2 pi i times e to the negative 1, because we'll have an i squared, divided by 2i. And then you can really clearly see here that the 2i's are going to cancel. And we're just going to have, uh, this is going to equal pi, this is going to equal pi uh, e to the negative 1, which is really just pi per e. And then we just take r to infinity. And we can conclude this solution for this real integral right here.
And again, this is a very nasty looking integral, one that by real methods we would have a really hard time uh, finding a solution to if we could even find a solution. But now we have a very reasonable solution to our integral with some very little math. And so hopefully now you really see the importance of Cauchy's residue theorem. It just adds another method to our arsenal to be able to evaluate different uh, integrals. And now hopefully this has expanded your repertoire of integrals that you're going to actually be able to evaluate. But it doesn't stop here. There are many more applications of Cauchy's Residue Theorem that we'll discuss in future videos. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks.